Joining us now, we have two people. We've got Simranjeet Grewal and Heather Brown. You both are part of the organizing committee with the user facility oriented programming. Right. So there's a wide variety of user facility oriented programming at this meeting. And before we talk about the events themselves, I want to start with the big question, the definition. What exactly is a user facility and why is it important for meeting attendees to learn about them? So a user facility, there's a lot of different types, but um, the basics are that these are facilities all across the country and international that researchers can come. There's a lot of different capabilities and expertise that researchers can utilize and they can access. There's different modes of access, whether you're doing proprietary work or non-proprietary work. Uh, but researchers should know about them because they have equipment, they have expertise that you can use to further your research. And we were just saying not a lot of people know about user facilities, right? Exactly. So it's just getting the word out. Getting the word out. That's why we're here. Very good. Now, Simran G, as part of the Student Engagement Subcommittee, you've been involved in planning a wide range of programs for this meeting. Give us a preview of some of the events that will be going on throughout the week. So this Tuesday, we're having a program called How to Write and Develop a Proposal User Facility because a lot of graduate students, oftentimes they missed up the process, they don't know how to write it, and they lose out on being able to use some of the amazing facilities that are provided. So we wanted to provide a workshop that not only covers what a user facility was, right. but how to write one, what are the, some of the techniques and technologies that are available. So that's what we're going to be planning on Tuesday. That's going to be at the Sheraton at the Fens between 4 and 8 p.m. I imagine it'll be heavily attended. I hope so. I believe so. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, Heather, you're a program manager at User Facilities, specifically the Center for Integrated Nanotechnologies, which is a joint center between Sandia and Los Alamos National Labs. You'll be a panelist on a session about creating an effective user facility proposal. What do you want the attendees at this MRS meeting to know about working with a user facility? Well, as we discussed, the main thing we're here and we want people to know is that we even exist. Uh, right. We've been around for over a decade and some people still have not heard of us. And so what we want people to know is that these facilities are national resources. They're here for you. Our facilities are free of charge for those that are doing non-proprietary research. We have expertise capabilities that are world class and we want people to know that they should be using us. They should be coming and taking advantage of these great resources that are available to them. Why do you think people aren't aware, enough people aren't aware? I'm not really sure. We're just trying You're to fix it. We're, that's what we're trying to do. We haven't found the silver bullet. So just getting the word out, letting people know we exist. Mm -hmm. I think people hear national laboratories and they think all of that is closed off to the exactly. external community, but these user facilities were built specifically to further research in the country. And so they're actually sort of an external face of the, you know, to the community for these national laboratories. But I think people hear national laboratories and think, oh, I can't get in there. And that's not the case. When these indeed facilities. they can. And Simranjit, I, I see you shaking your head. Yes yes, 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 yes. Now you'll be a speaker in a session where graduate students share their experiences in working with a user facility. Give us a preview of what you'll be discussing in that session. So it's a bit like what Heather said. So graduate students often don't know about what's going on at user facilities and how you can utilize them. And some of it, um, we're gonna be talking specifically with um, Benjamin. He's gonna be talking about how as a graduate student you need to put yourself out there. For myself, I'm gonna be talking about like how you overcome failures and oftentimes, sometimes you get rejections from proposals and how you need to continue on as a graduate student, keep pushing forward. And have you yourself used a user facility? I have, I've used two. So I have used... You're well ahead of the curve. <laughs> Thank you. I've used Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So there I use what is known as a transmission electron microscope. Mm -hmm. So we're able to take electron version uh, pictures of our material. And then I've also worked at NASA Ames Research Facility. I'm also a NASA fellow. And so from there, I'm able to get a graduate fellowship from there and spend in, um, summers there as well. And so from there, we were able to use different techniques, different ways we're able to make materials. And sometimes we can also collaborate with others as well. I was also part of the Insight Project where I was able to give some expertise about the material being able to form under heat. You're a fabulous ambassador, both of you. Absolutely. Uh, final she questions. Is. There are dozens of user facilities out there, both here in the U.S. and also internationally. How does someone begin at the process of finding the right user facility and the right collaboration? 
All right, so here at the meeting, there yeah. are a bunch of different activities. So I would encourage everyone to go down to User Facility Row. It's row 1100 in the Exhibit Center. There are 16 different booths representing over 100 of the user facilities here. So that's where I would start. You can talk to facility reps one-on-one. -on -one. Um, there's also uh, flash talks. These facilities are gonna give flash talks uh, later on in the week. And so three-minute talks about their facilities. You could sit down for one hour and hear about 100 different facilities. Go to the flash talks, go to the booth, talk to people and start to find out, you know, what place is right for you in your research. Simranjit, final word? I would say the sky's the limit. You can do user facilities, whether it's here on Earth or whether it's up in space, and all you have to do is just Google it. Fantastic. Thanks to you both for your Thank time. You. We appreciate it. Thank you.